Hey there, it is me, Sean Reddy, Keller Williams Reddy Group. Thanks for watching. You are now tuned in to the latest edition of our Denver Metro Advanced Analytics on the real estate market. What is happening on a week to week basis? And the only reason if you're, you're watching this is because you really, really, really love stats or you are attempting to time the market for the best time for you to enter for your goals, whether that's to sell a home, to buy a home, or to sell a home in order to buy a home, this is a video for you to help identify when the best time for you to come into the market. Okay, so if your goal is to sell a home, you want to see, and, and you don't, you know, you don't care about the buy side, you simply want to sell. Your goal is to see some reds and some oranges, those indicate hotter metrics uh, for our sellers. If your goal is simply to buy a home, you want to see the opposite end of that spectrum. Those are the blues into the greens. Uh, those indicate cooling measures for sellers, which obviously is better for you as a buyer. If you're selling a home to buy a home, really shouldn't matter all that much because you're doing them both in the same market. It is what it is. Okay, so let's just get into the numbers so you are well informed. First thing we look at in this first column here, this really kind of sums up the entire report. This is the odds of selling. Simple measure between supply and demand. You can see where we've been, where we, we are uh, currently at here and what's in between. We are sitting at 52% odds of selling, half and half, flip that coin, and you'll know if you're gonna sell in a week or not. Uh, all jokes aside, you can see we kind of peaked out in the mid 60s back in what I'm gonna say is the hottest market that we've had in 2023 for sellers, and it's kind of slowly dwindled back down into the 50% range, basically where we started the year, and that's where we're at right now. Uh, part of the reason why the average daily active listings, you can see really shrunk to about 35-ish, 100, 3,500-ish homes on the market, and has grown and grown and grown since then. First time over 6,000 this year, uh, any, and basically on any given day in the last week, there were 6,151 homes for sale in the, in the Denver metro market. That is the highest number that we've seen since right around Thanksgiving last year. Something to pay attention to, certainly. New listings, pretty steady, not much story here. 1,000 plus listings, again, uh, 1075 to be exact. Those are the properties that hit the market in the last week. Back on market and expired, those are property, or sorry, back on market, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back on market means that they were either under contract or in some other status and then came back active. Um, no real story here, pretty consistent numbers, 243 last week. Expired and withdrawn, those are listings that came off the market. Uh, they either you know decided to pull off the market or they uh, went through their entire listing period and didn't sell and just by default came off the market. Pretty steady, pretty consistent on those numbers too. No story there. Let me move me and let's look at pendings here. Pending sales, just like it sounds, those are the uh, number of homes that went under contract in any given week. Biggest weeks of the year, April into May. Uh, you can see there are periods where there are some dips. Those are uh, holiday weeks, coincidentally enough. Memorial Day, there is 4th of July. Up here somewhere is Easter. Yep, there it is. And we have been pretty steady over the last one, two, three, four, five weeks, with about 950-ish properties going to contract. Did jump from 881 to 923. Uh, hopefully we see a trend upwards there. Yet, yeah, takes two data points to make a trend. We're not there yet. Closed homes, I don't put too much emphasis on because that's such a lagging measure. Those went under contract weeks ago, if not months ago. Um, yet, you can see when there's a big push of contracts, usually after that, there's a big push of closings. Predictive MSI, here's another big one. MSI stands for month supply of inventory. Now, you may have heard this before or heard me say it before, we would need to be in the four to five month range to have a balanced market, meaning neither buyer nor seller has an advantage in the market. We are not there, guys. We're still at 1.5 months worth of supply. That means if nothing new hit the market, Given the current sales pace and the current demand, it would take a month and a half for these 6,151 homes to all sell out. Still very much seller's market territory by definition of month supply of inventory. In fact, it would take 24,000 homes to immediately hit the market to balance the market out. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, total show, I'm gonna skip over a few of these, FYI. We're gonna go to total showings here because this is the leading measure amongst all leading measures. This tells us how many buyers are actively out in the market, booking showings online uh, through their agent. 
that number was at its highest again back in April where there were over 17,000 showings one week. And it's currently sitting at 12,616. Consistency is the name of the game here. Been consistently around 12,500 showings uh, basically ever since 4th of July week. Showings per listing. Take that total number of showings divided by the total number of listings and consistent. Again, 2.1 showings per listing. Obviously not everyone's getting their fair share. Some are getting their unfair share. Some listings show dozens and dozens of times. Some have been sitting on the market for months without a single show. Showings to contract, how many uh, showings it takes for the average listing to get under contract, currently sitting at 13.7, slight decline from last week. Median days on market, this is another one of my favorite numbers to look at, means that half the homes went under contract of the homes that did go under contract last week, half of them went under contract in 12 days or less, half in more than 12 days. So that number did drop a little bit, yet you can see it's been pretty steady for the last 8, 10 weeks, uh, right around 10 to 14, we'll call it. Decrease, increase, and no change. What percent of listings dropped their price, increased their price, or did not change their price? Uh, pretty consistent across the board there. For whatever reason, 3% of properties increased their price. They weren't selling at the price they were at, so why raise it? Or why not raise it? I guess that makes sense. Not to me, though. Um, and with the average price reduction, and this might be something to uh, talk about in the coming weeks, went from 45000 down to 35000 Obviously, every seller is going to be different, have their own scenario, have their own goals, have their own agent guide in the process, yet I kind of thought it kind of interesting that the average price reduction dropped by ten grand. Uh, so the average price reduction last week, 6.6%, this week, 4.8%. Okay, that's a quick run through of the numbers. This is a uh, macro level look at a seven county area. If you're interested in something that's more your area, your town, your neighborhood, your specific home, send us a message because I love geeking out over these numbers and I'm happy to do it for your specific scenario. And if you don't, no worries. Just do us a favor, hit that notification bell until it goes ding, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do thank you for watching. We do this every single Friday, and we will see you next week.